find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast coming to you live from Pittsburgh, PA, or well, I guess live-ish. I guess most of you are listening to this on a podcast or something. Live, we're live now. It's it's, it's right now, right now we're, we're live. live now, but not when you listen. Not to then, this, now, not then, now. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters, um, and this is the cast where we talk about uh, technology and uh, dangly things. Apparently, so we're not doing the base, a, not the base, <laughs> not the base either. Uh, with me over on the couch. We got, of course, Chilla is with us back in studio. Hello. Hello, at Chilla on the Twitter. Split or <laughs> <what's going on? laughs> and uh, no, no, you're both on shot. Okay. And then the Dutters is back. At <laughs> K Dutters is uh, is on the couch as well in studio. Hi. Good to have you back in. You're, you're, you're post scarehouse season. Yes, yes. I'm yes. normal Dutters now. You're normal Dutters. <laughs> <laughs> less scary, less bloody, less. You're dressed up. Where did, did you come from? A party or something? Well, or? no. Chilla was un. You know, he was. I was undressed. Undressed. <laughs> undressed. <laughs> 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 Yes. Oh God! <laughs> That's what we look like. Um, also, also with us, probably regretting it by now, is Cynthia Klosky of BigBigDesign dot com and my bro- and my brilliant mistakes dot com as well. How you doing, Cindy? I am I am not as good as you guys, <laughs> but I will I will work to keep a catch up. Oh, <laughs> I I can't hold myself together. I have too much medication going on right now. Um. This is the awesome cast. Uh, we're recording here live every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time or so um, <laughs> at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at awesomecast, uh, awesomecast.net, where uh, you can find some of our picks, including last year's mini boom uh, speaker we talked about. We got some links to Amazon. You can help support the show that way. Um, you can also find awesomecast on Facebook and Google Plus, and you can talk with us and, and hit us up with some stories from there. And uh, you can also find us. We're available on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio uh, in audio and video forms. Uh, subscribe to us either way you want to there. Uh, so uh, let's get started with our awesome things of the week. If my doc will respond. Uh, Cindy, let's go with you first. The, what do you got for your awesome thing? My awesome thing is um, really aimed at the people who are the creatives in our audience um, and the people who wish to be creative. So it's the Writer Emergency Pack. It's a thing that's on Kickstarter right now, and it's being run by a, a guy called John August, who is himself a screenwriter. And so what he's doing is this Kickstarter is, um, you know, you have those moments when you're writing fiction or, or screenplays in the case of uh, like making movies or short stories or whatever you're doing. And you have this moment where you just, your story, you know that the story is just not working. And so what do you do? So you can brainstorm these things with other people, but sometimes you just need to do something. So this is a, this is a, like a brainstorming deck of cards and each card has a prompt. And so you just choose a card and you think about the things that are on it and you go. So this thing, this is a, a good Kickstarter. It was funded within, I believe, 90 minutes of its launch. Um, so right now, what they're actually aiming to do is uh, aiming to be, they're already, I think, among the very top Kickstarters uh, as far as number of people ever. But they're aiming to be higher, but mostly to do it for very, very good purposes. So like when you when you sign up for this, it's kind of like Tom's shoes when you like you get a deck of these cards and then uh, a child who is looking to become, a, you know, is in a writing program somewhere um, looking to be creative. They also get a deck of these cards or, or that kind of a thing. So they're looking to bring more people in and it's really exciting and it looks really fun. The art is amazing for these cards. And, and so I think it's in the I mean, it's the best thing I've seen all week. Awesome! Hey, wow, they, they, seventy-three thousand of their nine thousand dollar goal. That's 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 pretty awesome. Um, so, and it, it's basically just a deck of cards. This isn't some tech thing that you have to kind of question. They just need to print the things, right? Well, that's the thing. And 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 so, what's what I kind of uh, particularly adore about this Kickstarter is he's very transparent about how 
about a particular idea, which was stewing for, I'm going to say at least six or seven years or something, just pulling that number out of the air. But he, he actually tells you in, in some of the backstory stuff. Um, it's been stewing for a while, and they originally uh, envisioned it as an app. But when it comes to an app, it's so easy when you're trying to do something hard like writing, it's so easy to be distracted. So they thought, let's not ever go technology on this. Let's do something very low tech. And like pulling out one of these cards, you're not going to get pulled away from the task of writing. You're going to do this card thing, and then you're going to get back to your what you were trying to do, which is solve this problem. Hmm. Awesome. I think it's a brilliant idea. And I mean, they could keep expanding on this if they wanted to mm -hmm. come out with a bunch of different decks. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, once they exceeded their goal, they came out with the dark version of the deck, which is only going to be for people who um, sponsor the thing. I mean, they'll sell the, the things for a short while. The thing about playing cards is that, you know, again, the difference between the virtual world and the and the real life world, <laughs> the physical world, is um, that the econ there are huge economies of scale when you do a bunch of things, a bunch of printing of cards at once. And it turns Turns out Kickstarter has like huge resources. Like decks of cards are like a whole micro system within microcosm within Kickstarter. I don't know. Did you guys already know that? Like, no, I didn't. Mm. Uh, well, didn't uh, Cards Against Humanity start with uh, Kickstarter? Yeah. So yeah. maybe that's what kind of started, and there's just a bunch of other ones that kind of spun off of there, and, and they just kind of created a whole thing around it. So but I didn't know that they, they they put a lot of resources like kick, so Kickstarter is providing like like some kind of print resources to help them out. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean to say that. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. That, that there are just a lot of people doing playing oh, cards yes. through Kickstarter. And so if that's like an idea that someone has, there's a lot of people that have already solved it, that problem. Is, so you can learn from them. Right, right. And it is probably easier to, you know, we know how to say, you know, hey, here's you make all the files, you make the cards, here we go. Um, I could see that for general games and, and you know, people doing RPGs and stuff. Um, so... Cool, cool. And even like the updates for this, I mean, you want to sign up just to get the updates. It, first of all, they're cheap. But but second, um, you know, just like how playing cards are made, you know, as a as a person who has played a certain amount of blackjack in her life, I just thought that was interesting. So it's good stuff. Awesome. Okay. So that's the writer emergency pack. Go look for it on the Kickstarters. <laughs> and they still have eight days to go as of, and we're recording this, of course, on Tuesday, the 11th of November. Uh, so you can jump in there and give it a shot. Uh, Shilla, what's your awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing is, and I, I've actually been thinking about getting, we, I think we've talked about it on our previous shows, the Office 365. Mm -hmm. Microsoft bundled everything they pretty much sell today for $199 that's subscription-based. So it's $199 gets you Skype Unlimited International, so unlimited calling to like 62 countries, Xbox Gold, Xbox Music Pass, and Office 365 Home, which is not personal. Home gets you the five, the five licenses. And then that's going to nab you unlimited storage in OneDrive for 200 bucks a year, which would normally be about $420 Jeez. worth of services. The interesting thing, too, is I'm sure just like anything else, you could probably stack these. So if you already paid for one of these things, it's just going to add another year to it. Ooh. Mm. Obviously, it's not going to like if you were say you renewed gold three months ago. Well, it's going to tack another year on to your gold. And it, so you'd have a year and nine months and based on this subscription ad. <clears throat> I'm looking at it just from the. The Office and Xbox Live Gold, because I already pay for Live, so mm -hmm. there's sixty bucks right there. Mm -hmm. If I was looking at Office, so I'd be at a hundred and sixty if I just paired them up together. And, and I'm wondering, so I'm looking at this. I'm I'm kind of in the same thing. Missy has, uh, she just has the three sixty five personal, mm -hmm. but I could see her upgrading so she can put it on more computers around here because we have a lot of computers. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, I couldn't see using the Skype, Gold, Live Xbox Gold, Music Pass. So Music Pass is their Spotify, and that's what I, I'm, I'm interested in. Look, so they have a Google app, they have an iOS app, they have a Windows Phone app. Obviously, no, they I'm, have it, they, they do have iOS app. Yeah, Ooh, no. they have they have it for Windows, mm -hmm. and obviously it works on your Xboxes. I am uh, uh, my Pandora is at the end of its yearly subscription. And they're going to give me a four dollar a month subscription instead, 
because you're just eliminating the yearly. Uh-huh. It's normally five dollars. I don't want to pay a monthly fee for my music. Right. Like it's it. I I feel like, and I think we've talked about this before with services. I'm experiencing the like kind of the micro payment fatigue because how many like eight dollar ten dollar mm-hmm. subscriptions am i subscribing to now right um well, you do do you do you do um hulu i do hulu so you do hulu netflix hulu, netflix marvel unlimited uh WWE. wwe network and of course now we have office i have ten dollars for photoshop um I have something else in there too uh, and of course there's other little services like backblaze and uh fresh books so I, I'm, you know, it, it's that like, okay, I got to put this money over here and make sure this is here, and, you know, for multiple mm-hmm. little, little, little things, you know, um, and it'd be nice to kind of just package that. Thing. And again, remembering to renew Xbox Live Gold once a year. Right. You know, so you get, you get, I mean, music was the only one that I really didn't know about. They do. Uh, to me, it sounds like Spotify. They have offline listening, unlimited ad free streaming, um, create artist based radio stations, um, Devices automatically stay in sync. Ninety thousand over ninety thousand music videos on your Xbox three hundred and sixty and Xbox One, and pricing's ten bucks a month. Or in this, you're getting it bundled. Um, so I just look at it as I mean, I have Xboxes in almost every room of the house. I have wait, really? iOS devices. How many Xboxes do you have? I have a one and two three hundred and sixties. Really? There's only two of us. Well, three of us, but Christopher <laughs> can't play yet. So, well, one day he's set. <laughs> Yeah, jeez. But I, so I mean, I just look at it as being able to have that music resource, and then I, we've even used the Xbox in some rooms as like a cable box because it has the Verizon app, mm-hmm. it has HBO to go. And you it don't has, have to pay for the box, right? right. Mm-hmm. Then I'm not yeah. paying for the box. That makes sense. That so, makes sense. so I mean, to me, the the hundred ninety hundred ninety nine bucks is, seems a little bit expensive, but when you look at it, yeah, I probably wouldn't use the Skype Unlimited. Mm-hmm. But I would at least use the music pass, the live gold, because I'm already and doing it. It's one that. flat rate, and it's one flat rate once a year. An unlimited data storage on in the cloud to back up. I'm more interested in backing up like all my photos and some random documents. I'm not storing anything that I'm worried about people finding out there. I'd be, uh, and obviously I'm going to keep a backup too at home. But mm-hmm. it's just a nice extra place, probably like you use Backblaze. Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I had one. I haven't got to experiment with a lot of these yet. I just saw the news story today, uh, and it was a little occupied. But Chromecast is having another expansion of apps, um, which is good. Something to keep me occupied because it sounds like the uh, the uh, Amazon Fire Prime Fire Stick TV Stick. What's it called? Um, is delayed. It's the fires. It's it's, the... it's telling me mine's going to arrive in January now. Oh, apparently they start. Uh, apparently this happened to a lot of people, um, but they were supposed to start shipping in November. I got my like twenty dollar Prime version, and we'll talk about some other interesting Prime things that are going on too here a little bit later in the show. But uh, Google on their Chromecast blog, they have a Chromecast blog. Okay, um, they announced that Chromecast is going to get Stars, Showtime, uh, well Showtime Anytime, and uh, family friendly video games. Which, okay, cool, you know, Stars and Showtime, especially since Stars just announced they're going to be doing an Evil Dead series with uh, Bruce Campbell attached. So I'm kind of really interested in that. Uh, I don't know if the Stars subscription is cable required, though. But um, but still, I mean, it's nice to see the expansion. But the, the family-friendly video games, and it's really hard to... They list everything, but they don't link anything. Every, I feel like everybody did a really bad job at talking about this. They're like, oh, hey, here's a list of the apps, and go find them in your stores. And not all of them are in the uh, Apple Store. Um, but but apparently games like uh, a version of Monopoly, Monopoly Dash, Scrabble Blitz, um, Wheel of Fortune, which is a paid title. Everything else seems to be free. There's a version of Just Dance that's attached to this that apparently will go to your Chromecast. We played it with this before. We actually used the Chromecast for um, a version of Cards Against Humanity where we all had our phones and tablets. We downloaded the app and we play Cards Against Humanity like displayed on the TV because your cards pop up and they'll flip over and everything. Um, and it was it was definitely like somebody made it so it was a little glitchy. But it was mm-hmm. really cool that everybody has their controller and pushing it up there. Um, I, was, I was really, you know, I, I'm glad to see they're expanding this finally. Well, it's to- nice, especially for things like Scrabble where you don't want people to see what, what are they called? The tiles. What tiles mm-hmm. you have. And I, and I think you missed a big one hmm. um, that Dutters was pointing out. Emoji Party. Which is apparently a movie trivia game. 
Oh, yeah. really? Yep. Yep. I downloaded it on the tablet. Um, like I said, most of these are on the Android, unfortunately. Uh, the only ones that seem to be on the iPhone were was really Monopoly Dash that I found. Um, so you're going to have more evangelists if you have an Android uh, phone or device. Um, yeah, Emoji Party for Movies. There's a big web quiz, which I think, I think that's the one they say utilizes the Google Knowledge, Dra- knowledge Graph uh, to generate questions. Mm-hmm. That could be fun. So I got them all downloaded. I was, I was downloading them actually before the show. Uh, so I'm hoping to play with them here in the next couple of days and hopefully report back a little more. But, but again, just, just really cool that they're, they're, they're expanding that out a bit. Um, also, in this article, they say that Google is also providing two months free of Hulu Plus and 90 days of Google Play All Access Music. Another one I'm considering, by the way, as a replacement is the All Access. Because it's every, it, and they have it on mm-hmm. all devices, so why not? Um, to to uh, anybody... No, wait, it says to anybody with to anybody with a Chromecast. So I guess not just new Chromecast users. I'm sure they're trying to get people on board. I think there, there's going to be a price war over the whole music. And and I'm I'm really interested in the one article you posted in the in the notes. Hmm. Uh, I don't want to digress to there now, but where where it talks about Taylor Swift. I, I posted that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that was Cindy. No. I didn't post it because it just makes me angry. <laughs> it makes you what? Everything it makes me makes angry. You angry. It makes me angry. I'm having an angry day. Thank you, uh, Daughter, is you, uh, you have a studio surprise. Yeah. It's a kitten. Oh, uh, you went back to see. What is the galaxy? Yeah, it's yes, fine. <laughs> Did you switch phones? Maybe. <laughs> what? what happened with the iPhone? Uh, here he is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What is happening here? Why are you juggling? You, you, the, those, those on audio. Whoa. She has two, uh, <laughs> we can say giant phones and a... Uh, a really giant phone. Let me see your phone. And, and, uh, and a note. Wow, that is massive. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't fit that in my pocket. I, okay, so what had happened is um, <laughs> Mama Dutters and I had made a little trip to Best Buy yesterday because she needed a laptop. Okay. So we went laptop shopping. Uh, turned out, uh, I've been looking and getting a hotspot, and uh, she got a hundred bucks off her laptop if I got a hotspot, added it to Verizon, so on. And um, so they examined our plan, and we are on some old family plan where we actually have minutes, and they, it's very archaic apparently. And what, ser- what service? <laughs> Verizon. Okay. And uh, so they were like, "Well, you can switch uh, to this data plan," and it was a whole, you know, get new phones and this, and it's still going to be like twelve bucks less a month with the hotspot. That's how bad this plan had us messed up. So once the guy talked to him and he talked me into trying the um, S5 for the camera. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm, I'm kind of, it's, it's on a test run currently because I do have 14 days with this. And um, they give me 200 bucks. Well, what happens is if I don't give them my, my iPhone back, I get charged 200 bucks by mm-hmm. Verizon. But the, what I could sell my iPhone for, which could be another show. There we go. Show me how to sell Here, my iPhone. Here's the funny part is. That they'll give you two hundred bucks for an iPhone, mm-hmm. but go try to turn in like a Galaxy S three. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get two hundred bucks. No, there's no value. There's no value. <laughs> yeah, at all. It, it 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 amazes me how many companies cash in on the turn in your old iPhone and get something else. Mm-hmm. And then when you go to turn that thing in, they're like, "We're not giving you anything for That's that." That's also <laughs> what happens when you have common hardware. Yeah, mm-hmm. like definitely. <laughs> That's why. I, well, Macs don't drop in price not not very like at all either yeah. but um but they're generally like a better build anyways and kind of start off a bit higher so you think you're gonna switch i don't know i i'm there's uh, to be honest with you th- the size is very scary to me and um there's nothing about it extraordinary that's really catching my eye at this point i mean there are certain features that i've missed my status light there's silly little features that i've missed on here about having a droid and um but th- the problem i'm running into is it has a 16 megapixel camera which is great but at the same time, you have to, you can't just go Poop, and take a picture. You have to play with the settings because it is so, such a good camera. You're not, it's not the point and shoot mm-hmm. that, because um, it, it, if, if I play with the settings, the photos are phenomenal. If I'm just out the window, oh, cool, look at this. It, it's not. So it's, it's not good. It's just got a, not a good casual photo taker. No, no. And it's, and I, I, I do enjoy taking really good photos, but. If, if you've ever seen my Instagram or any of my feeds, I, I'm taking walks and I'm on Liberty Bridge going, oh, look how cool the city looks right now. Mm-hmm. I'm not sitting there going, okay, hold on, let me adjust this to see how I can get this to, to go, which is, 
you know, maybe somebody else might have more time for it, but I, it's kind of coming off to me that this is not exactly what I'm looking for in regards to a cell phone. And, and I, the funny thing was that some guy walked up to me after class yesterday and asked me if I had changed and I was holding my phone going, oh my gosh, if this guy tries to take my phone, there's no way I'm hanging on to this thing <laughs> if he tries to pull it out of my hands because it is so big in my hand. <laughs> You don't have small hands. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a very large person. I was going to say, I mean, the, the, those, the, the, you're... It just, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my tablet. <laughs> like it's... And that's the that's a complaint I think I've heard about the bigger iPhones. Or Chilla, maybe you were saying this about the bigger iPhones. There's the, that size plus the slickness. It just feels like it's going to fall out of your mm-hmm. hands. Yeah, the a interesting bit. Or actually, no, I think Chachi was because he was... Because uh, he has the 6... We we're comparing it 6 with his new LG that we were talking about several weeks ago. And, and we're talking about how that... You know, you know that that grip is is kind of off on it because like there's a weird. If I remember, it was I think the LG he had a problem with because it's like thick in the middle, like it, it, it tapers to the it middle. It tapers. Like and and that kind of messes with how you hold it, Mike uh, uh, or Chachi. Um, um, uh, correct me in the in the chat room if you're around. I don't think he is. Um, but um, but yeah. Well, did they do anything like so on the iPhone now? Even if you're not on the six plus, if you tap three times it pulls the whole interface down so you can reach it with your thumb oh yeah there's one-handed what's it called it's one this is weird there's like a whole change in it's it's one-handed except to get to the one-handed mode you have to use two hands you just use two fingers to get to the to get to the it's what is that where did it go is it even so have you ever have you ever seen that on one of the new the new on the new iphone if you triple tap right right it pulls the interface everything down it, 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 <laughs> on the Samsung, you I have to use your anything. other hand to swipe down with two fingers to get into. Is simple. that kind of like the four finger tap thing we tried with Loki a few weeks ago to get the Instagram features? <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't, I don't even know where it's at. Like there, I, this is there's one handed operation. There we are. Adjust the screen size and layout for controlling. Turn on one handed bar. One handed operation. Okay, let's see. So you swipe in from the. I don't know. What's going on? Oh, there we go. And maybe no, no that's not anything. I am not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's, I, I don't know. Like I, I need my, I, there's no wow to me. There's, there's no, no and, and I'm not, I'm not bashing. I, there's, there's still, like I said, I have 14 days to play with this. So I, I will take it on a few test runs and, and I'm not totally. Is that a life case on that as well? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It is a very nice one. It's kind of nice. doesn't look like it fits in too many cups. No, that's so. the problem. I'm not going to be able to do So in that case, keep it, because I'm tired of you putting it in my cup of water at Eaton Park. She's going to throw it on the concrete. Yeah, I did that with this one. It was fun. Uh, but no, it, and like I said, I'm not bashing it. I, I don't, not sold on it. There's no, this is fantastic. It, and, and I didn't realize converting back. I, I mean, I, what did I get this August? And I'm already confused on how to use this phone. <laughs> and I, I i had a nexus for two years like i just i don't like wow. what happened here well that's what's weird though because you go from the nexus to a samsung well that's probably the- i was going over as somebody um somebody i work i've been talking with her a lot about uh social media and her, her what she's doing her, with her phone and i think she's got an s4 mm-hmm. and we're, we went in and said she's like what was all this mean i'm like i don't know that i have a nexus tablet and none of my stuff looks like that there's just so many settings and they didn't make any sense and they looked like they were all kind of weird samsung fit features and i have my problem isn't android my problem is the people that put out android yeah and, like i was suggested that i look at a g3 and um as far as because they have a nice camera and a nice interface was it and, the lg yes i think that's the one chachi has yeah, yeah so and then i was that was suggested which i'm not like i said i'm not against android it just i i just don't i don't get the appeal of this right now i'm sorry mm-hmm. when it seems like 16 megapixel pictures would take up a lot of space real yeah. quick or have a slow write speed yeah even if it's going to an even if it's going to an external card it's kind of a slow write speed so it's not like you're gonna be able to burst no you have to take off a complete all the stabilization to even get a burst at oh, all. wow and it's like i said i was I, we were driving oh back from the south side the back way up mccardle and the city looked great and i'm just snapping pictures and the noise in in the sky, you know what I mean? Like if you were to zoom in any bit, you would it would just be blurry, blurry, and you can see the noise. And and a lot of it looks to be, and even when I looked online, it seems to be a lot of it's the adjustments I need to make on it. But I don't think there's enough the, the compensation. I don't know. Something's it's just not. Yeah. What I had hoped it would be as far as cameras go. That's the one thing I would like to see on the six plus with the image stabilization and all that kind of stuff. But I haven't played with one for any prolonged period of time. That's that's the one thing I would like to see. I was surprised with not many tweaks to the camera. The difference between 
the iPhone 5S and the 6 even. Really? Like, hmm. they didn't tout any real changes, except for, like, what, on the front-facing camera, they dropped the aperture down so it worked better in low light. Well, I never used my front-facing camera. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the pictures that we, Carlo will take, and I will take in the same room, same same subject, same lighting, is just night and day between the two cameras. Like, see, it's very, it is noisy. Great, yeah. And uh, the battery life on it's horrendous. I, and I've disabled the bloatware on mm-hmm. it and because I thought maybe that was part of the problem, but the battery life is just horrendous on it. And I can't figure Isn't out. Isn't that one of those where they put like like some kind of like dual quad core GPU or something? I could probably run, this probably is more in it than my laptop does. And... Yeah. <laughs> so is your phone, really. Yeah, well, yeah. So. Well, my, my Mac Mini. <laughs> awesome. well let us know keep us updated on what's going on with that <laughs> i feel like i have a saga now <laughs> we, <laughs> the saga of we the keep, phones can you, uh, can you take this and take this what are you doing and you can mount these together <laughs> so that so the camera still showed yeah there we go and you could just kind of flip them and I've, I've been using the it's funny because i've been using this for the on the wi-fi my iphone on the wi-fi so it's like it's like an ipod <laughs> Yeah, basically. <laughs> I still run a 3GS in the kitchen just to pull up Pandora. It mm-hmm. takes forever to load initially, mm-hmm. but just if you're in there for a while doing dishes or cooking, perfect. Well, you could call anyone with an iPhone from it. Oh, really? FaceTime, yeah. You could FaceTime audio. You can... Oh, yeah. wait, you get to the tip of the week. I have, I have yes. feedback on that one for sure. Oh, we'll get that in the moment, but first I want to get to an awesome <laughs> thing that was contributed by Alex Cars. He's done a little bit of artwork for us around here. Um, so he says, uh, I wanted to give my thoughts on some of the awesome apps Adobe rolled out for the iPad. I guess he just updated to iOS 8, so he's excited that he's like on, on the level as far as those go. Um, they have uh, quite a few, but the ones I spent the most time with were Line, Draw, Brush, and Shape. Um, Adobe Line, and there's some pictures here. I'll pull up this email for you guys on video. Excuse me. There we go. Um, I don't know if you can see that coming through. You guys will see that in a moment. Adobe Line, uh, this is easily my favorite of the apps as it puts a focus on precision drawing. There are options for different lines and shapes and stencils, grids, and much more. So yeah, it looks like you're basically kind of graph shapes, uh, kind of, uh, you know, quick tool. Uh, Adobe Draw, similar to Line, but with what appear to be more artistic options. And he drew a nice little... Awesome cast, and I guess that's a little dude. I don't know. I, well, he's he's, he's t- taking us out of it, and he made it Alex cast. Oh, Alex cast. <laughs> All right, Adobe Brush. <laughs> a long story short, you can use photos from your camera roll and take a picture to help create brushes for uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, or the Adobe Sketch app. And let's say you took something, and, and he's just kind of brushed it along there. So that's cool. Adobe Shape. Um, another one I like a lot, you can take a picture or use photos from the camera roll, uh, to great shapes and pass you can use for illustrator and more. And there's actually a picture, this is like, it's a picture of him that he converted over to a, a kind of a line drawing. Uh, I'm really excited to see, uh, what I can make with these apps as both an artist and a designer. Adobe really knocked it out of the park this time. So there you go. Um, I think a lot of these. I, at least the I think the line tool and draw can also use their new tool set that's like the little miniature ruler and the pencil or pen mm-hmm. the Bluetooth it's all the Bluetooth type stuff I think they all leverage these tools as well like you can integrate those tool like the actual physical pieces with with these tools nice nice so tip of the week as you were mentioning. So, tip of the week, um, <laughs> Apple's getting sued in California. What? So, they've, and and I think this actually came out before the whole lawsuit thing came out. Apple has created a tool online to allow people to opt out of iMessage. Um, one of the things that people forget to do before selling their iPhone is to actually turn off iMessage mm-hmm. to deregister from Apple servers. So then all your peop- all your friends that have iPhones that have been sending you iMessages have no way of knowing that you don't have that phone anymore and you may have switched. And then you're sad because you miss 
a whole heck of a lot of messages. Especially if a lot of your friends and family have iPhones. Yes. Um, and if you don't have a Mac to know that they're coming through, <laughs> you, you're screwed. That's what saved me. Or an yeah. iPad I, I or didn't something. Get any, I didn't get your message. I didn't. I had a whole list of messages when no I switched way. over. Yeah, because it was like, uh, what's going on here? I'm like, everybody messaged me. Yeah. No, once in my um, mini, but not my phone at all. You're lucky you got a Mac. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I would never. I'd be like, hey, what's this awesome guy? I knew for? someone that carried an iPad around with them for three weeks. Because of this issue? Because oh, of the issue. Wow. It, it is a problem. Um but, it, you know, I, I think I think there's some scary things that you can do with the phone. Um, remember a, a little bit ago, I started using Human, mm-hmm. H-U-M-I-N, if you want to check that out. It was basically a replacement for the phone app, uh, contacts, etc. And uh, I just decided I don't want to use it. It, it, it. I didn't see any advantage in it. But you actually have to have it dial a certain number for your carrier because it was basically doing a call forwarding of all your voicemails to their service instead of, like, at and T's or whatever that, the vision. so I use I use Umail yeah because it can it actually looks at the caller ID that's coming in and it'll say like hello Mike John's not available right now yeah so it'll actually address the people that are calling me but anyway so I do the same thing yeah but but uh, but I realize like I almost just said ah get rid of this and just not even think about it and then I'm like oh wait it, it's doing that thing with the voicemails I, I better have to do something like I, at the last minute I remember to, to do something but if I would have just deleted that. There goes all my voicemails, probably. <laughs> yeah. See, the nice thing about Umail, what they do is, is they put two entries in your address book and your contacts. Yes, th- this one did too. So at least there's like the activate and deactivate. But yeah, yeah. you do yeah. lose all the voicemails. Yeah, they're gone. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. No, nobody, <clears throat> I'm really worried about. It. <laughs> <laughs> but um, especially as little as, as as the actual phone of my phone gets used these days. Yeah. You know. So. Um, so did you deregister, or how did you get? I closed iMessenger. On my laptop, on my Mac. What? And it seems like things have finally pushed over. But you never went on your iPhone and turned off iMessage. No. Oh. Yeah. No. Huh. Yeah, because um. It's weird. That is weird. Because like for, for I'm getting messages uh, from Brian Snyder, and um the yeah, other coming they're coming through and I know he's unless they're well no we've texted before so maybe these are coming through his text. Messages. They could be coming through his text or that, that could be it too. I've seen other people like. If they go into the phone and set the phone number as as a as a cell phone instead of an iPhone and different things yeah, we'll go through in it. the address book, yeah. it'll work right. Yeah. All right. So I'll go home and check in a thousand messages. Awesome. If you if you go on your iPhone even now mm-hmm. and go into settings. Let's see if it's quicker to find settings on here. <laughs> and go to iMessage. Keep going, keep going, messages. Oh, it is no, it is turned off. Okay. So it should slowly. Get so it was, it was probably Get yeah. Probably, probably since that app was left open on your other computer, it was still receiving them and thought, thought everything mm-hmm. was. You should probably go on your computer and make sure it's turned off there too. Yeah. So like in the settings. So. This is fun. This is awful. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I love the new feature where I can actually send regular text messages from my computer though yes mm-hmm. so that yes. i mean that's yes. been huge for me unfortunately i didn't realize how many google alerts i get through text <laughs> that I could, like every show that we start tonight i start getting a ding on my laptop and like oh, oh like i'm waiting for something to come through and i left the speakers on in my office next to my bedroom and it wakes us up in the middle of the night <laughs> or something um yeah so hey i want to give a shout out to our buddies over at slice on broadway you can check them out sliceonbroadway.com we had a lot of studio guests you guys are all in here blango is here for the rambling movie minute um and uh they're helping us feed the guests so you know because it's dinner time for the most part when you guys come out here um so go check them out there uh, down here in the south hills on uh, broadway and Beachview uh in the south hills of pittsburgh they also have a second location in Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street. So please go check them out. Tell me you heard about them on the Awesome Cast if you're in the Pittsburgh area. And uh, and uh, <laughs> oh, sure. support those that support the show. So we had we had a lot of contributed stories today. Mm-hmm. Um, this was interesting. This is from Matt Weller, uh, who's who's an often contributor uh, to Awesome Cast. So he, he, he pitches us a story every once in a while. Uh, but he popped me this one. Over this last week, somebody made a pyro glove wrist mounted flamethrower. Mm-hmm. Um, very inspired by, and we've seen in the past kind of the Wolverine claws, you know, actually like activating claws in the past. Mm-hmm. So uh, definitely um, um, he got the idea to make this from Pyro, John from the from X-Men The Last Stand. Really that one? 
<laughs> really? You have to go with that one? <laughs> um, a warning, this this instructable deals with high voltage electricity and fire, in case you didn't figure that out. Um, looks like an interesting situation. So if you want to shoot fire from your freaking hands, um, go check this out. We'll uh, I'll tweet it out here um, for you guys on Twitter and Facebook and such. So. What I loved about the video was how how several times the kid on oh was said. <laughs> Sorry, will you pause there for a moment? I, I was saying that his uh, he almost set his hair on fire a couple times in the video, but he was not frightened at all. It was amazing. <laughs> awesome. Hey, we're getting a little bit of a static from you there, Cindy. I don't know. Okay. I'll check into other things. Okay. okay. Maybe, uh, are you on a USB headset? Uh, no. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll... I will explore. We'll explore the settings. I wonder Sorry. how big the tank is on this. How long will it last? Well, it would, it would have to... Uh, well, presumably, you know, have to be something you'd wear, right? Oh, I'd, I'd want the tank as a backpack. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> For it to go in. There you go. Um, also the Amazon Echo, the other prime thing we talked about, and, and, and this is another thing like, like the stick, if you have prime, they're actually going to give you about 50% off. Um, it goes for $200, but you can get it for a hundred dollars if you have prime. Um, it's a big cylinder thing that listens to you. Um, it's a standalone Siri, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm not describing this. I, I noticed you, you put, is this the creepiest thing you can put in your living room? And then you put my name next to it. I don't think this would be the device I would put in my living room. Mm -hmm. I think this would be the device I put in my kitchen. Only because when I, when I, when I saw like a portion or heard a portion of the video for this, it was asking like how many what teaspoons are in a tablespoon or how many, uh, whatever things of that nature. And then the other thing that it was popular for was add this to my shopping list, which are all things that I think of in my kitchen when I'm like, I have the refrigerator door open. Oh, we need to get eggs or, Oh, we need this, that, or the other. Um, I know on the one thing I was like, remind me to get wrapping paper. Um, but, and I'm guessing that's what the big push Obviously, for Amazon is they want you to make that shopping list and shop for everything on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. and plus it, it, it'll do the music. Mm -hmm. It'll do you know, and, and, and just about anything you ask is going to apply to Amazon. Maybe they'll eventually they'll do reservations and such. You know, um, you're asking about Thanksgiving. It'll push Thanksgiving things to you, perhaps. Uh, but I don't. I already have something in my living room that can respond to my voice for the most part. Right, with the Xbox, and then usually my iPhone's plugged in, so I can always do the, hey, you know the word. Um, I don't want anyone's phones to all go off and just start dictating. <laughs> um, or, or answering random questions like on the last show. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't... I guess I feel like the ask it a question is a, a little late, since I have a bunch of Google devices, and I have I have iOS that's, devices. That's the thing. I, I feel like anybody that'd be interested in this has one of these or three of them, like Kitty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I mean, I, I I've seen uh, uh, Frank Fuzzy uh, that's been on the show, uh, Frank Shanoeth. Uh I've watched him with his tablet say OK Google from across the room. Okay, nothing's going off, yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, to find it. You know, so you, you can say like, OK, Google this, you know, um, I can say, hey, Siri, this, you know, uh, for me, it's like I've got this plugged in. I'm in the bedroom and I was like, what's the weather tomorrow? What are my alarms for tomorrow? You know, unfortunately, both mine and my wife's phone often answer me at the same time. <laughs> but I like like I, like I said, I've been I've been kind of ill today. So today when I'm like, you know trying to get up trying to move trying to figure out my day i'm asking it questions mm -hmm. like i didn't realize how great voice recognition is when you feel like crap <laughs> <laughs> like that was my revelation today that should have been my awesome thing actually um and i'll probably do the same thing tomorrow morning too um but uh yeah it, it's it, i i don't see the appeal of of of, of this thing i i don't see Technology wise, it's interesting. And unless they can build it into something like Apple's doing with HomeKit or Google's and, and doing with some other that's, stuff, yeah, this is a first yeah. step. Uh, it, it's got companion apps for all their Fire devices and iOS. It looks like, um, and uh, it has seven microphones on it. 
So oh, you don't so have to because omnidirectional. You, you, yeah. you listen to some of the video, right? Um, which is very, very weird. Uh, it makes it makes it feel creepy, mm-hmm. and it's poorly acted, and and makes the father look like an idiot. Um, like the 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 moment where uh, the wife. Can I, can I can I comment on that for one minute though? Because I feel like um, that was your reaction, but I feel like it was very reassuring for a certain chunk of the audience. Okay, so just because I, okay, I, I get it. So the, the, this I'm not the common audience. Obviously. I don't think this is for you. I think this is for somebody who can't figure out somebody Google that phone. doesn't have three phones like Katie. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So they're the, so they're reassuring <laughs> this for families and kids are involved and everything. Yeah. People and, that still have flip phones. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But I, I just can't see them jumping into something like this. But um but but there was a moment where like like the wife like yelled at, you know, you raise your voice like when you're talking to your Xbox probably, right? Mm-hmm. Or when you say, Hey Siri, this, you know. I don't have it plugged in. Um uh, but uh you know that you know that's impressive as far as that goes, but I don't know. It's uh we'll see what like what two point of of this is or how it starts rolling in and everything else. Because they already have I'm going to have a stick in my TV that's going to respond to voices. You know, how many people get on TV box that responds to it? There's going to be a companion app on all their tablets, you know. See, I want it to link, when I was saying link to other things, I want it to link to other things in the house, like I'm ready for bed and certain things get turned off and certain lights get turned on. I don't think this is that. On. This is not that. But But why can't they partner with... Like Wemo and, mm. and a bunch of other services and and your hardware. phone your phone's going to do that way before something like this does I think I, I guess because if this if, if they put it if, if if they did one thing and put it on if this then that then boom that's true because if this then that will interface with almost everything so that that's where that's where I could see having one of these in in a certain room or even maybe multiple. In depending on the size of your house, mm-hmm. that's where you'd I have, would see these kind of fitting in. For you'd me, you'd have to have multiple because they were doing it like in multiple rooms of the house, and I mean, either someone is monopolizing it and walking it from place to place and plugging it in because it needs to be plugged in. You know, the way they are doing the video, it's like you're going to have one in every room. So then, how do they interact with each other? Do they are they interconnected? Then, you know, and can mm-hmm. you use them like Sonos, where they it's the same music across all your rooms? Mm-hmm. You can say play music in living room and kitchen if you're, that's where you're going to be, you know, rolling through doing work or, mm-hmm. or something like for. Or for that's where your sister is and you want to piss her off. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> What'll be interesting too if you could say like play smooth jazz in the basement and play yes. yeah, rap, there you go. hardcore rap. There you go. In the I bedroom. already experienced this because sometimes I I just um, uh, turn on Pandora on the Chromecast when I'm like not even in the living room when I know Missy's up there just like has the Chromecast. Cause we, we just leave the Chromecast on cause there's such beautiful pictures. And we just like, we have our own like slideshow <laughs> mood picture thing on a 42 inch TV. And it's, it's kind of soothing, you know, and it's always changing. So we just leave it there. And then whenever we actually want to do anything, we don't have to bother even turning the TV on. We just click the thing and it pops on, you know, now we well, can, that's the, and, and that, now we can play Wheel of Fortune whenever we want. I want to start a game of Wheel of Fortune. Hold on a second. She's sitting up there. Can you? <laughs> and that's the thing that I'm talking about, though, right? Because when I get up in the morning, I grab my phone. And I, as I'm heading downstairs, we have the um, Harmony from Logitech. I hit, I hit the watch TV button. It flips on the Xbox, flips on the stereo, tunes it into the right thing, turns on the TV, and everything's ready to go by the time I get downstairs. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to, like, say, hey, Siri, I woke up, and I want all that to happen. Instead of me having to launch an app and go do something. Yeah. that That's where, I, and, and, I, and I know you can do it in roundabout ways with, with Android and, I can't remember what the name of the app is. It's an automation app. But... I, I don't want to have to code everything and then when someone changes the way their apps work, have to recode it. So, yes, I know it's possible, but I'm lazy. Well, you can go check it out. I believe it's Amazon.com slash Echo, if I recall. And watch that video just for fun. And pay. It's half off if you're a Prime. It's half off if you're a Prime member. 99 bucks. Um, I'm not going to drop 99 bucks on it. I got enough things I can talk to. <laughs> so... 
Um, Cindy, I want to get a couple. I think these are your stories down here. Well, first of all, I know one is. Uh, tell me about Spotify and Taylor Swift. Oh, is she there? She might be frozen. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, while we see if she comes back, um, let's talk about Google Wallet use grows after Apple Pay launch. Are you getting that? Yeah. What? Are you That's getting like, something weird over there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very. Oh, oh I'll, I'll look into. I'll, I'll look better. into it. Um, no, um, so go ahead. Google Wallet growing after Apple Pay launch. I think this is to be expected. Mm -hmm. I think it grew awareness, right? It grew awareness. So mm -hmm. a bunch of people with Android devices. I think she fixed it. Yeah. Um, um, a bunch of people that had Android devices said, "Oh, can I do that too?" And Lo and behold, they could. No, they said, I can do that too. <laughs> you used the wrong tone. <laughs> and I guess vice, I mean, that, that goes either for Apple or for Android. It's, it's never, oh, can I? It's, yeah, I can too. <laughs> but I have, I've actually seen a lot of Android devices. I actually sat in Subway just to see what would happen throughout lunch. You're like stalking people in Subway. No, not message. specific people. I want to see if anyone's <laughs> using the technology. And I was surprised there was both Android and Apple users coming in. And it's funny, too. I, I know a guy at work that got the 6 Plus, and, and he's from Cleveland. Don't hold that against him. But um, <laughs> he was saying, I, I went out and I picked up my phone, and I immediately went to McDonald's because I knew they took Apple Pay. And he, he bought this. So he... The only reason he stopped at McDonald's was because he wanted to use his phone to pay for something. So it's interesting. And he said, you know, when he was in Pittsburgh, the, um, the hotel he stayed in, um, he actually gave a speech at CMU. Um, the hotel he stayed in had on all the vending machines on all the different floors had the pay wave. Really? And he used his phone. Um, nice. So he's like, he's like, the one thing that he thought was is the whole Apple Pay is a little... It, the way they're labeling certain companies like Target and this this company and that company that are using the technology, he's like anywhere you see the little the little airwave looking thing for PayWave. So, so basically, it works. Basically, and this is the problem that the Rite Aids and all of them uh, ran into because it is the same technology that we've all been using this entire yes. time. The, the same thing that when I got that first uh, bank card and I could mm -hmm. tap with it. Yes. It's all the same. All they're the just same. A Apple's adding. A, I mean, Apple. Now they're, the doing, one, they're doing something different on the phone with the security and the thumbprint. But generally, it's not any different. What what attaches to the system is not anything different technology same, than anything. Same else. same technology. The thing that Apple's doing too that's a little that's a lot different is Google actually obviously transmits your credit card number and, and whatnot or whatever you have in Google Wallet. Apple created their own token and their own number so and it's changed every time so it, if yeah. someone steals your credit card number you don't it, it's still they, you can't use it but it's still they got the apple it's still the technology is sending everything is, yeah. is the same though yeah. cindy i think we got you back right i think you're i've been here all along you're not i'm, I'm on my cell phone at this point oh. uh, just to, so i don't really know i'm, I'm down to the I'm down to the bare minimum you know it, it ends up being the easy sway because you actually look better than you did before <laughs> That's the weirdest thing. Well, this is what I'll do from now on. All right. Tell me go. about uh, Taylor Swift and Spotify. And then she froze? Well, okay. so I think that I, it's very possible that I am the only person here who does not use Spotify. I so do I'm not. Actually, I don't. I actually I don't. posted this because I want to know more about it. She apparently has taken her entire catalog off of Spotify. So I do not use Spotify. And I'm in the, I'm actually looking for a music service and Spotify was actually where I was going to go mm -hmm. until Microsoft came out with their potential deal. But, um, I think the Spotify service is. I mean, it's kind of the all you can eat buffet of music, right? As long as right. the, the right. as long as the artist puts their library up there. Yeah. Um, some of the interesting things is that, and I've seen a lot of artists with Spotify doing a lot of live music and posting stuff that you can't even get in a CD or downloadable form in some way, shape or form. Um, Spotify throws some extra gimmicks on there. I think they have artist curated playlists where you can listen to what Justin Timberlake listened to supposedly last weekend, that kind of thing. But 
or that his being, assistant or somebody. Yeah, is it what it's really yeah, what his assistant put on his playlist for him to listen to last weekend. Um and he may not have listened to. But anyway, that being said, I'm wondering this could cause if if this works out for Taylor, will this cause more and more people to start pulling their back catalogs. Well, I think, and, and, and she's complaining because how much money she gets from Spotify for X number of plays. Right. And unfortunately, I think she's looking at these. I've, I've actually, I receive, I have music on Spotify and Pandora and all that stuff. And I get, I've seen the invoice. They don't send it. They don't send the full thing. Like they used to, but I mean, I get 30 bucks, right? Um, but the number of plays and you got 0. 0.00000 cents per play and all that kind of stuff. And, but she is the same thing. Apparently there was like thousands or millions of plays and she got a thousand bucks. That's after the, that's after the, the, uh, record company gets their cut. That's after, you know, Spotify divvies that up. Basically what you pay when you pay 10 bucks mm-hmm. or their advertising, 75% of that goes to the artist and they divvy it up depending on place. Now you get more and more people, more and more plays, then that's going to look like a smaller number. But also um, versus, you know, buying Taylor Swift on iTunes or buying the CD, that's a higher markup. Mm-hmm. Like right off the bat. It's a listen versus a, an ownage, Right. Right. So it's going to be different. Um, one, I can't remember which one it was, but one one podcast was talking about. I thought I thought this was pretty accurate. Spotify needs to be looked at as radio. It's promotion, because if you're a real big Taylor Swift fan, you're going to buy that album. Especially with the new 1989, where there's like six different versions where you get different. Exactly. And, and now you see also whatever. now you also see that all the gimmicks they have to do to try to sell the CDs. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, when I, I thought that was actually the point that that Apple was trying to make, even with the ninety nine cent audio or ninety nine cent track, was give the people that are buying the physical media something extra to get them to buy the media versus the ninety nine cent a track piecemeal or twelve ninety nine yeah. um, digital download. But I guess I look at it as if you're an artist and you can pull the demand that's going to people want the music bad enough, they're going to go buy it. Or is someone are we are we going to go back to thievery and people are just going to start well, either way, the I, it, well, I, either way, it kind of ends up the music's not where you're going to make your money. Right. The touring, but, the touring uh, and everything else is where you make your money. And uh, and, and John's actually put it in here. Uh, I heard it was just a move to get uh, the numbers of her new album up. This was kind of the last point of her kind of media week that mm-hmm. she did. Mm-hmm. And also, hey, um, yeah, the record industry is using her as a weapon at this point, too. And so uh, she sold 1.3 million copies of the latest album, making it the fastest selling album in 12 years. So, mm-hmm. I mean, in the meantime, it, it worked. In the <laughs> meantime, there are smaller artists that love Spotify. Because people can sample the music, get into them, catch their tour when they come through, catch, mm-hmm. pick up a T-shirt, whatever it is. Um, so I think you're going to get to a certain point where maybe the person that gets on Spotify isn't even interested in Taylor Swift. They're interested in the MC front a lot. You know? Yeah, and, and maybe that's true. But I guess what is the mainstream Spotify user? What are they looking for? Mm-hmm. To me, they're looking for the all you can eat. I'm not. I don't want to pay for 99 cent per track for all top 40 songs this week kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, It'll be, I'm just interested to see how this plays out. Are we going to see other artists doing this? And then are we going to see, see it go kind of cross medium? I I don't know. Or are, because I mean, if this works out for her and other artists start to pull, then you could say the same thing. They could start going to the same thing about Netflix and our, our movie house is going to more movie houses going to start pulling from Netflix and, and things like that. I'm, I'm interested. I, I to think see... I think Netflix is the same thing. You go to Netflix. What do I watch? Documentaries. What are they buying? Documentaries. You know, I mm-hmm. think it's more discovery than I want to watch the Avengers. You know, um, see, I go on there and I'm looking and at what's on in series. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I mean, I went a couple weeks ago, I get through these, like I'll go a week where I watch nothing but documentaries and see what leads me to the next, leads me to the next. And I, and I love that experience, um, that, that discovery side of things. But, um, 
Uh, Cindy, what do you? I, I know we kind of diverge from the you know should you use Spotify, uh, but we what do you think about these issues that Taylor's bringing up? Um, I'm wondering who's advising her. You know, I feel I don't really know. I mean, she's got probably a gazillion people surrounding her, and I'm True. and I'm just sort of if uh, I'm tempted to think that it is um, like Chilla was saying, it's it's some sort of a play to pump up this album. Yeah, you know. Particularly considering the whole, she's the ambassador for New York City, you know, kind of crazy marketing stuff they've been doing for her. I, you know, I, I actually, I, I would not be able to identify a Taylor Swift song if you played it right now. So it's more, I'm, I'm watching her as a phenomenon. Yeah, I, you know. I, I only can because of the, the, the lambs that sound like humans that Mikey and Bob did that one time. I, I think it was the Trouble song. But yeah, they that's, were the screaming goats or whatever. Yeah, they, screaming goats. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I want to play Ghost Simulator now. Um, I was like, oh, hey, good news. Cindy, I think you put this in here too with uh, President Obama. Yeah. I. So um, this is one of the. So this has been a busy week for me. You've been sick. I've been crazy. And so I actually had to. I knew that this was important and I wanted to go back and check it out. Different people's analyses of. Uh, President Obama's um, suggestion for the net neutrality plan, you know, suggest, um, so right now instructing or strongly suggesting the FCC consider it a, um, a utility in the same way that the telephones are, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, you can hear, you can read all sorts of opinions on the web based on whether someone is now or was once a, um, you know, a cable company guy, uh, almost always a guy, um, or, uh, you know, what their, what their different opinions are. It seems, has said some things that seem they seem logical they seem well based in history and in things that i think are going to be very positive not just for consumers but in the long run for business and so people who have companies that have spent a lot of money on building out the fiber for this country are not excited about it because but you know what they've already recouped their investment i don't feel sad for them right interesting because he basically also calls them out as being a monopoly which they are. I mean, yeah. right here in Butler, oh, yeah. I, I love our local cable supplier here in Armstrong. And just for disclosure, I um, they were a client of mine. But um, I also feel it's unfortunate in most cases in the across the United States that you can't choose your cable provider. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, uh, well, it's one of those things where um, we recently had a discussion about, like, you know, when would we move? What we think about if we move from, like, where we're at now? And I was like, well, it's got to have Fios. Like now, that is a reason to move to a certain neighborhood for me because I'm not getting Comcast. I just I will not. I've dealt with them again. I won't. I won't deal with them again. Um, and FiOS I know has the speed and reliability, and and I'm sold on that. You know, and it's not everywhere, so that kind of becomes limiting. You know? As as long as we don't start seeing lower caps or pay per kilobyte, or yeah, yeah. that that's the only thing. And and don't get me wrong, I'm. I, if I were to weigh on one side, the net neutrality is definitely the side I'd be on. But I'm just nervous. Like, is there going to be a backlash that these corporations are now mad and angry that they're being treated like a utility? Mm-hmm. And there, there's going to be, can there be some kind of backlash that we all end up kind of paying the price and just playing devil's advocate on that side? Because I don't want... I, I don't want it to be like my gas bill or my electric bill. You use so many kilobytes this month and here's your bill. Yeah. 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 That's the one thing that as a, as a heavy user and I understand that there there's, there's people like us that have that extremely high end use and, and then everybody else that barely uses any, I just worry that we're going. That the tech people are going to be the ones that foot the the heavy bill, or the yeah, the, or the ones doing things like we're doing here. You know, this broadcasting mm-hmm. thing. You know, right? Um, because if it was a per kilobyte thing, guess what? We're not doing it right. here every week, right? Or or are you going to have to to be able to to be able to hit the that? Or are you going to have to to pay for some kind of business class mm-hmm. or something like that? Are they going to s- split it out? I I don't know. That's yeah. the well, only the thing other, I get nervous about. The other about. piece of it, though, is you don't want if it's all free, then you have the tra- the potential of the tragedy of the commons, where someone who is doing a web web you know hosting service out of their basement, mm-hmm. you know, which we used to run into before, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The time I ran a shoutcast server on my Comcast. 
Well, you can you, you can do that today even with Verizon and Comcast. You just have to pay for the business. Of course, you can just pay yeah. for the business. Yeah, we ran a server out of my old company I worked yeah. for. Um, like we were serving videos out of out of a server that sat in the office, you know. And they were definitely on the files business side and everything like that. Um, because it used to be like up on an FTP, but now it's just like oh, it's on a hard drive, so it didn't take us forever. Because it used to be we were uploading videos on DSL. <laughs> oh, oh hell, like like an hour. It was horrible. You know, like and they're like ten minute videos. It's bad. It's bad. Um. All right. On that, uh, we should wrap up here. Um. Well, first, let's take a look at what's coming up. I know tomorrow is demo day with uh, Alpha Lab uh, down at the. Um, Hazlitt? New Hazlitt Theater, I think? Yeah, New Hazlitt. New Hazlitt? That's, that's one on North Side, isn't it? Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, Wireless, War- Wireless Warrington uh, launch party with Made of Mesh is November 13th. That's this Thursday. Uh, they have a meetup over there looking for the hardware store. Um, they have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, uh, they're really pushing the Allentown kind of rebuilding right now uh, up there with the hardware store. And they got a new sign. See this picture there, a new sign out front? I have um, Go check that out on their Facebook. PodCamp Pittsburgh coming up uh, November 22nd through 23rd. Uh, we'll be there. I'll be doing video. I have, we'll be, I guess we should talk about Awesome Cast Live. Um, I think they announced the keynote speaker, Yajagoff, is going to be there. Uh, John, who's been on this show, of course. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to be doing two sessions on video podcasting. Which I think I want to rename video for the web because I, I don't like that podcasting word when we talk about this. Uh, so the plan is to talk about how we're using Google Hangout and uh, and what we do here, basically. Um, so I mean, kind of show people how they can kind of get started with that. Uh, so so it's going to be like a one on one and a two on one, I think. Um, and also, startup shop fair is coming up. You're actually involved in that, aren't you? I'm going. I'm going to it. I'm going to it. Awesome. Ooh, uh-huh. Where where can people find out about that? Oh, I don't even know where I signed I think it's, up a meet, it's meetup.com. Yes, uh, it's a meetup. Just look, up, look for the startup job fair. It's over at CMU, right? Yes. Correct. And it's a Saturday. Um, no, it's it's a random day. It's a random day? It's a random day of the week. You know, just pick a day of the week and it's yours. Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Okay. Which that the see I found something nice about this I can easily see my calendar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it was calendar was a, something to solve on the iPhone. Um, you can also sign a petition. Speaking of yeah, Jagoff, you yeah, Jagoff.com. He's trying to get Jagoff in Webster's dictionary. Go sign the, the petition over there. Um, Cynthia Klosky, where can people find things that you do? Are you there? We'll start on the couch at K Dutters on the Twitter, right? Yes, on the Twitters and all the stuffs. <laughs> awesome. And Chilla is at Chilla on the Twitters as well. As well. And Cindy's back. Where can people find you online? I'll say this quickly. I'm Cynthia Klosky at Twitter. And then I don't know, just Google Cynthia Klosky and I'm, I'm all over the web. All over the place. All over the place. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Again, please uh, check us out at awesomecast.net, including some uh, you know some picks we have from the show. And support the show by clicking on those if you're looking on picking up any of the batteries we've talked about or speakers or, or iPad cases. Or, there's a bunch of them listed over there on the right. Um, and where did my notes go? There they are, and we're recorded here live uh, around about 6.30 p.m. Eastern. We're getting started uh, every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com. We're Twittering, we're Twittering it on, at AwesomeCast, <laughs> AwesomeCast at sorgatronmedia.com. And you can subscribe to us to, on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Thanks to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR for helping with the notes and tweets all night long. And I love the title option of Smooth Jazz in the Basement, apparently, for this one. Um <laughs> So with that, uh, for everybody, thank you to our awesome chat room that's been uh, dropping in screaming goat videos all night. Uh, You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.